Hi, Gemini. Welcome to your February 2018 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So Gemini, there's a lot of concentration of energy in your ninth and 10th houses in February. February is a short month, so everything may go by in a blink of an eye, but still, I mean, first of all, the sun is in Aquarius for a little bit over half the month. Aquarius is a fellow air sign and it actually falls in your ninth house of the higher mind, foreign travel. Um, the higher mind, can, by the way, can be university level of education or uh, philosophy. It's the God house. And then the sun goes into the 10th house on, you know, in Pisces, and that happens on the 18th of February. So you have these progressions from that ninth to 10th house. One of the things I think in a broader context that this could indicate is that some of you are really thinking long and hard about a profession that really speaks to your values and your, um, I would say like your spiritual construct. And I, I think back to what happened on nine 11 and a lot of people really, um, I mean, I know someone personally who who mentioned how they changed their career based upon that one experience where that made them think. And some of us are just naturally philosophical. So it wouldn't take some kind of outer event to make us act like this. But there are other people where um, very dramatic things happen. It doesn't have to be in the, in the outer world in terms of some, um, event like that. It could be some traumatic event that happens uh, to you personally that makes you kind of think twice about how you're living your life. Because especially if somebody, let's say somebody dies who's close to you and you start to think, wow, you know, we are mortal beings. We may have eternal souls, but in this lifetime, we only have so much time. So why am I doing this job that I can't stand when it's, it's only temporary anyway? I might as well be doing something that I love, even if I feel like a little bit anxious because I'm not sure if it's going to work out for me and I've got to pay my bills, you know? So those things may be kicking around in your head somehow. And so let me just start with the fact that Mars is going to be in Sagittarius for the whole month. And this is your seventh house of committed partnership. So Sagittarius is the opposite sign of Gemini. And in the opposite house, it can indicate that you are involved in some kind of a lawsuit. Um, now, obviously, this is not something that's just going to spring up on you. You would know this already if you're watching in January. And I would dare say that for some people, this may be a divorce that is happening because you have had Saturn in this sector for two and a half years. So some of you have had a marriage or the equi equivalent type of serious romantic relationship severely tested and it did not end up uh, passing, you didn't end up passing the test with the marriage. Um, they say that when Saturn transits the seventh house, if the relationship is already on shaky ground, Saturn will finish it off. And obviously, when a relationship is finished, some people have to extricate themselves legally, and that might be what is going on. For other people, you may be involved with something with traveling with a partner. And so you're very active together. Mars can indicate a lot of activity and Gemini's like to move around a lot physically because of that ninth house, um, 
stimulation, you may be actually traveling in a foreign country. And by the way, since I might as well bring that up, there is a new moon in Aquarius, but it's not just a typical garden variety new moon. It's a solar eclipse, very powerful new moon at 27 degrees of Aquarius. And this is hitting that ninth house. So some of you may have been really wanting to travel and um, actually Mercury is in this sector as well until the 17th. So you may be researching, trying to call and get the best best um, airline uh, ticket prices and stuff like that. But the dam bursts and y- you get this opportunity to do this. And it may not be in mid-February when you actually board the airplane. It might be later on, but at least you're getting the ball rolling or the universe is, I should say. And this would probably be a trip that you've been wanting to take for quite a while. Maybe you're in America and you want to travel through Europe, or maybe you're in uh, Europe and you want to travel through Australia. Who knows? So anyhow, um, that's very exciting because that could be a whole new world opening up for you, literally. And for some people, this may involve academia, where you are trying to apply for a job. So that ninth and 10th houses are covered in that particular case, because the 10th house is career and the ninth house is university. And definitely an air sign like Gemini, um, you know, would take to teaching at a university like a duck takes to water. So a couple of days before, um, actually more than a couple, on the 10th of February, Venus goes into Pisces, into that 10th house. So Venus is in that 9th house. Venus can bring money um, for you to travel also or for, you know, pay you to teach at a university. But Venus can also mean that you fall in love with somebody while you're in a foreign country or from another um, cultural background than yours. When Venus goes into your 10th house on the 10th of the month, it can bring money to your career. So maybe a raise. It can give you favor with superiors. If you're looking for a job, you will probably knock the socks off of the people that you interview for and you come across very charismatically and people want to help you. So that's awesome too. And so it's interesting because we have no full moon in February because as the month begins, we are coming off of a blue moon lunar eclipse on January 31st. And this is at 11 degrees of Leo. So for you, Gemini, this is your third house of communication. This is the house that you rule in the universal chart. So this is especially important for Gemini's because this is, you have a direct connection to this house anyway. And to have this lunar eclipse in the third house, um, for some of you, there could be some kind of a project um, that you were working on, because this is a very powerful full moon. This could be something that is related to social media. Um, it's even possible that you, if you were talking to someone, um, somebody comes into your life in a dramatic way through the internet, um, or that you are propelled along on some kind of a writing project. And it's like, when you're talking about eclipses, it's really beyond your control. It's something coming in or leaving in a very um, definite sort of a way. 
And it's not something that you can uh, stem the tide of or prevent. It's like kind of beyond your control. And so this is one of the reasons why eclipse periods are considered rather unstable because they bring in great change. So rather than looking this as losing something or something leaving your life, this could be a great realization because full moons can bring these aha moments that connect with your siblings, that connect with um, some kind of a creative project that involves writing that you have always wanted to do. Maybe now you start to really have the inspiration to do it. Uh, one thing that, you know, Geminis are natural writers, but any time, any of us who likes to write, one thing that can be very frustrating is you have an idea, but you just have a hard time mustering up the energy to actually do it. It's always more palatable or downright enjoyable when you are brimming with ideas and you just like, it's like automatic writing. You just write, uh, write, write, write. And when Geminis get into the groove, they can really do this. It's just that, um, and this may be a period of time of great, of great, uh, an abundance of creativity to be able to do whatever is going on. And you may want to start a YouTube channel or start a blog and that can be profitable for you as well. Okay, Gemini, I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is rainandmoonastrology.com. Have a great month of February. Bye.